Hey guys and welcome back to Now I Know. Today we are starting with one of the very basic and important topic of genetics and that is laws of inheritance. Now there are three laws of inheritance given by uh, Gregor Mendel, father of genetics and they are uh, law of dominance, law of segregation and law of independent assortment. Today we are starting with law of dominance. So first of all what is this inheritance okay laws of inheritance what is this inheritance means inheritance is nothing but a process by which characters or genes are passed from one generation to the other generation from parent to progeny so these are the laws that will apply every time the uh, you know inheritance every time genes are passing so what he did is okay to understand this you know what happens is we know the concept of alleles by now because we have talked about genes and alleles briefly if i want to say what are alleles alleles are nothing but slightly different form of the same gene right let's say for example i'm talking about color of a flower okay pea flower it can be either purple or white and that depends on what alleles are inherited or what alleles are there in that particular plant okay now purple is actually uh, dominant the alleles of purple color flower is dominant over white allele that means white is a recessive phenotype right what is phenotype this also we have talked about genotype versus phenotype phenotype is what we observe so the color purple and white is the phenotype of the plant all right now this dominant and recessive this is the concept that is given by this law of dominance okay that's what law of dominance talks about so what happened is what he did okay let me just uh, directly go to the experiment he he at the time worked with only one particular trait let's say for example he worked with height okay he took plant that is you know two plants uh, that are same in all other characters except for their height that means one plant is tall and one is dwarf now he carried out series of hybridization experiment to give these laws so he selected tall plant versus dwarf plant rest everything is same now one important thing that we need to understand here is he selected true breeding plant what that means is so that means he made sure that these plants have undergone continuous self pollination in order to have stable trait in inheritance in short uh, you know now we can say that he made sure that they are in homozygous condition okay these terminologies were not there now but we know what the, you know importance of true breeding plants is so that there is a stable trait inheritance in short that these plants are homozygous so he took tall and dwarf true breeding plants so now this we know when we say true breeding means we know it is in homozygous condition and what is homozygous condition that means both the alleles are same okay now when the plant is you know uh, undergoing hybridization the gametes are produced again we know that in meiosis the gametes are going to be half that means these two alleles will get separated once again meiosis we have talked about it so these two alleles will be separated so each gamete will have only one of the allele so alleles we are going to get is only either capital t or a small t so what he observed in the uh, next generation that is the f1 generation is he saw that all the plants are tall what he had in the parental generation a tall plant with a dwarf plant and in the f1 generation all plants were tall that means all of them resembled only one of the parent it resembled only one of the parent and the characteristic of the other parent was absolutely absent 
right there was no dwarf plant and it is not that there was a blending it was of exactly same height of the parental plant there was no in between plant it was all tall as this particular parental plant now in the next step what he did is he crossed two of the plants of f1 generation and amazing enough in the f2 generation what he found is of course there are these tall plants but you know from nowhere again the second parental phenotype that means a dwarf plant appear back all of a sudden now the second uh, parental uh, phenotype is occurring you know again it is back and he also noticed that the ratio is also you know 1/4 that that means the phenotype that was visible in the f1 generation is more compared to the second parental phenotype that means what he concluded is there is something that is being passed on and it is not only the height he carried out these experiments with other uh, traits also like he carried out with the color of the flower or the uh, type of seed wrinkled or smooth seed and he found the same result that in f1 generation you will see only one parental uh, phenotype all the plants in f1 resembles only one of the parental phenotype the other one is totally absent but in the f2 generation suddenly the second phenotype or the second parental phenotype appears but in a very low amount that means only one fourth of the plants had that so what he observed is that there are three plants that are tall okay tall three plants and there is one plant that is dwarf and this is the observation that he got for any other characters that means three of them would have one particular character and only one plant will have the character of the other parent that means he always observed this 3 is to 1 ratio of phenotype that means he concluded that from one parental plant the whatever it is you know that time this allele and genes phenomenon was not there but he said factors the factors from one parent dominate over the other parent so that means now we know it is the he was talking about genes and alleles so if we have uh, we started with the true breeding plant that so that means the genotype was in the homozygous condition capital t and small t and in the f1 generation it because there was a fusion it is now capital t and small t so if we make punnett square and if we observe over here capital t and small t are the gametes of this f1 generation and when we cross them this is what we find capital t capital t capital t small t capital t small t small t small t only those who have got this particular combination small t small t have got the dwarf or are the dwarf plant rest three are tall plants that means this capital t is dominant over or the tall phenotype is dominant over the dwarf phenotype that is what he said and and that is where this dominant and recessive came into the picture the tall phenotype or the allele for the tall phenotype is dominant over the dwarf phenotype now if i want to write the genotype here i can write capital t capital t that is what that is homozygous capital t and small t there are two and there is one small t small t this is the genotype but we don't talk about the genotype ratio when we talk about these laws of inheritance we always talk about the uh, phenotype ratio right and this is a monohybrid cross because it is only one trait that we are talking about one gene we have taken we are using the monohybrid cross because it's only one trait that we are talking about and the phenotypic ratio that we get over here is 3 is to 1 for monohybrid cross now we can see here there are three of them are tall right that this is a mistake over here it should be capital t capital t okay so sorry so this over here even if there is one capital t is there it shows the tall phenotype that means a dominant allele you know 
at least one of the dominant allele has to be present in order to be expressed if there are two of course it is going to be dominant but even if only one uh, dominant allele is present it is going to dominate over the other allele that means these two are also in heterozygous condition also dominant allele is going to mask the other allele and for a recessive allele to be expressed they have to be in homozygous condition then only it can be expressed otherwise it will be masked or it will be dominated by the other allele so in conclusion what mendel's law of uh, dominance or what he stated after this particular study after seeing or finding this 3 is to 1 ratio is that presence of one particular trait in this case it was being tall is dominated or it dominates the other trait that means being dwarf so the presence of one particular trait is dominating the other trait and it shows that particular phenotype that's why we had one phenotype being more in number compared to other phenotype that's why you got 3 is to 1 ratio so that's all that's all about law of dominance that presence of one trait dominates the other trait or one dominant allele there should be at least one dominant allele present in order to show the dominant character and for for recessive there has to be presence of both the alleles to show the character and you get 3 is to 1 ratio in monohybrid cross that means only one trait or one particular character is taken into consideration so that's all about law of dominance and i hope this video was helpful i'll see you in the next video until then keep learning